We're going to roll in again, people. Back on the dance floor. Breaking podcast virginity today. Um, a, a wonderful, wonderful, talented fighter. And, and by the look of it, an even better bloke, Chris Terzievsky, mate. Thank you for coming on the show. He's nailed the intro, bro. Thanks, <laughs> thanks so much, mate. Bro. I've heard that many people interview you and just butcher your last name. So I was like, I've got to get this right. <laughs> it's horrible, man. I've copped it all. Terzievsky, Terzievsky. <laughs> yeah, the Australian media. They and got, hey, when you're the champ any. champ now, you got to nail it. Yeah, that's right. That's Man, how's the last few weeks been for you, bro? Yeah, it's been sick, man. It's been yeah. sick. It's been pretty... Uh, uh, chaotic a little bit, but yeah. uh, it's been mad, bro. I've been riding this mad buzz, and I think it's starting to settle down now. We were just talking before about the fights yeah. happening on the weekend. Yeah, fuck. So yeah, you sort of yesterday's news pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, but I know, right? I need another scrap asap. Yeah, are you are you looking already? Are you planning or like what's uh, the go? We've had a few offers like get thrown at us and stuff. Really? which has been mad. Yeah. Um, they got the. There's another big fight coming up. I think on the fifteenth, Justice Honey. Oh, that hasn't happened yet, has it? No, no, he's fighting um, this guy Joe Goodall. So they he's just has got to get past this guy, but got a couple of offers to fight him and right. that, which is pretty is mad. That for, are they? Is anyone holding a title there? Is that They're actually fighting for some regional titles? Bro. Regional so titles. So he, he um, vacated the Aussie strap that yep. I just fought for, and um, I think it's a WBA and an IBF regional title so that'll get them ranked I think top 15 in the world so far out so that's a big fight for you then yeah bro it's gonna be massive would yeah. that be seen as like a more important fight than like the gallon fight in the sense of like rankings and probably boxing yeah. purist kind of format 100% I think it'll boost me every fight now is sort of looking to, as a progression type of thing you know what I mean mm -hmm. but um yeah gals one was more the way I saw it was like an opportunity to sort of introduce myself to Australia and yeah, Aussie literally. boxing and that or more like the people outside of that and then now it's like all right let's start making some big moves and shit so yeah it's, uh, nice. it's pretty hectic it's man like cool it's one of them like I sort of you just sort of chilling and training in my own little bubble yeah. and then all of a sudden it's like let's go overseas and fight or let's fight this dude and I'm like Jesus Pump Christ. the brakes. Just out of nowhere. Pump the brakes. Yeah, bro. You got to run with it, man. Now, for, for ladies and gentlemen who who don't recognize this man or do recognize this man, I'm trying to think of how. He's the man that just beat Paul Gallen in uh, a massive fight, which was in Newcastle. And obviously, what was probably the most fascinating thing outside of the fight was the media coverage around it, which for you, even though you are like the superior boxer with the record and you're actually a purist boxer, like a professional boxer, whereas Gallon's obviously, he's a pro boxer, but he's come from the rugby NRL, league background. Yeah. yeah. Um, but still, it was like the, the fight that got you on the stage. And that's what's fucking weird to boxing, like with me. Yeah, yeah. Is like, you weren't really fighting a purist boxer, but it's the biggest fight you've had, like from Literally. media coverage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Dude, bro, the whole thing was surreal from the get-go, man. I, I was... um. I don't know if I was telling you the story last time we met, but I was, I felt like I manifested this whole opportunity. Like, um, there's this new weight division that's opened up. It's a bridge weight division. Bridge and, weight. Yeah, yeah. So it's at the top weights. We can't really, if if you can't cut down to 90 kilos, you're in a mix with boys that could be like 120, 130. It's cruiser weight division is 90.6, and then then it's heavyweight. So and it's like unlimited, unlimited. For, well, what? So you could be one fifty fighting in a hundred, bro. My fourth or fifth fight, <clears throat> I have fought a guy. So I'm six foot three, and I walk around about from a hundred to like hundred and three kgs. I walked in, man. This guy ducks his head in the door. He was six foot eight, weighed one hundred and thirty eight kilos. <laughs> bro, all these guys like so. When, when you got fighters, yeah, the the lighter guys, they got to make weight, obviously. Yeah. So you see them and they're sort of like dehydrated and they're looking at me and they're like, man, you're so lucky you're a heavyweight, you know? And I'm looking, I'm like, you poor bastards. And then this guy literally ducks his head in the door. They go, whose guy's that? I was like, that's my guy. And they're like, you, oh. you can keep heavyweight, bro. You know oh what I mean? Oh my God. Yeah, man. So it, it's like an open weight division where I thought at a bridge of weight, that's, I would literally walk around at the top of that weight division. So when it opened up for me, I think humans are just getting bigger and bigger. I don't know what it is. Yeah, so. fuck, man. I feel for you there. So, yeah, bro, I was like, I can slot into this. And then I looked at Paul Gallen, and um, he sort of fights around the same weight. And then the fight that just happened on the weekend, I was, I was actually trying to get on that card. I was right. like, how am I going to get on this Cambosis card, man? Like, that would yeah. be sick exposure. So I was going to DM him. And just be like, hey, bro, like, I know you've done a lot for Aussie boxing. Like, I'd love the opportunity to just compete against you and just see how it went. Yeah. And then that weekend, um, Sonny Bill dusted 
Might as yeah. well maybe Barry Hall. Yes. So when he got beat, all, all the boys were saying to me, they're like, not a chance, bro. He'll fight Sonny Bill. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, look, you're probably right. And then literally a week after, a week and a half after, I woke up in the morning, got a message. It was a screenshot from my promoter and my manager. And he goes, literally went, um, got an offer for Chris Terzievsky. He writes, who with? Just says, Paul Gallon. He says, yes, no worries. And that's how it happened, bro. What? So Gal saw your message? He just didn't respond no, no, to it? No, no, I didn't even send it. Oh, you didn't send it? I didn't send it because I was like, And it still oh. happened? Yeah. Oh, my so God. I was talking about it, talking about <clears> it, <throat> and then literally it popped up on my phone. From then, I was just like, what the fuck is going on, man? It was Jesus. tripping me out. But I feel like manifestation in boxing is like, I mean, in any sport or probably anything in life, but boxing, it's like you see it the most. Any, yeah, because you can't really, you can't really share that. Like, oh, I'm not too sure how this is going to go pre-fight. Like, yeah, you yeah, yeah. just yeah. have to fucking say it. Literally. Right. Yeah, literally. like we literally saw that with Cambos and Haney, which we'll touch on. But what, like in, in your sort of boxing career, like do you – do you use manifestation a lot? Do you use kind of the sort of, like how much of the brain is powerful going into fights and through the fight and stuff? Yeah, bro. I, it's massive. It's yeah. massive. I um, That was the one thing for me that I sort of struggled with even throughout my whole career. It was more like belief in yourself and just mentally prepping for, for fights. You know what I mean? I've yeah. always had, it's been weird for me. Everyone has always said to me, you know how you hear some guys like, no one believed in me, but I was the only one believed in myself. I was almost the opposite. Really? Everyone's telling me, man, you're a freak. You should be doing this. You should be doing that. I'm like, just, let's just keep that <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, really? I sort of always liked just being one of the boys. Like I don't, never really wanted to like jump out and have the attention on me yeah, type of thing. Yeah. So I was always just like trying to fly under the radar a little bit. You know what I mean? Like I love the sport, but anytime I got too full on, I was like, oh, I'll just kick back a little bit. You know what I mean? Really? Okay. So for me to sort of step into myself and sort of really try and achieve, like achieve greatness to whatever, to some degree. Mm. That was more my issue. So it was, for me, it was a lot of finding my, that's why I love boxing so much, man. For, Cause for me, it was almost like a self discovery tool. Yeah. Like you go, even my first fight ever, I was like, you, you're shitting yourself and you're, you're feeling all these emotions. And then when you sort of go in there and you feel like you beat yourself, it's like a mad level up. So that's what I've sort of looked at boxing, even the people I've met, having a, I would never think about doing work on myself and my mentality mm. if I didn't have this sport because it's never pushed. I've never had to face adversity to a sense where I'm like, I'm going to try and do this. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, definitely, man. Um, the mind manifestation, visual visualization, all that stuff, dude. It's neck level. It's key. That neck level. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Now with the with the gal fight, obviously you wanted that fight. How did you kind of cope with, even though you probably knew going into the fight you were the better boxer, I think he even said he's by far the better boxer. Yeah. He's just like, I'm I'm tough, you know, good luck trying to knock me down type thing. Yeah, yeah. How did you go through like the pre-fight or the build-up? Because you're on Fox Sports News on a fucking daily basis. It yeah, was like bro. literally like these mini sort of podcasts, like banters going yeah. on, these sort of press conferences, one-on-one. Um, yeah. -on -one. What was sort of your headspace through that? It was nuts, man. It was nuts. Yeah. I was same thing. Like uh, someone said to me, they go, it was like you did a four year apprenticeship in three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they just threw me in the deep end with this. Cause even that I thought, all right, it was mad being on a no limit card and that type of platform. But to be like, not just put on the show, but to main event it. Yeah, bro. It was like next level again. And there was good fighters on that card as well. Yeah, man. Like Hugh's younger brother, fucking who Harry Garside. Yeah, Garside as well. Sam Good. It was like, the card was stacked. Yeah. To toe. Like it was, it was mad. But um, yeah, in terms of like the media thing, I was again, I was just like, a, a big part of me was like, just be true to yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I think, obviously everyone wants to hype fights up and talk it up, you know, Conor McGregor spec type yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> I thought to myself, man, why not I got some mates that'll really keep your head in line, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Don't be trying to do that shit. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Well, you didn't. <laughs> but um, I just thought it would come off fake if I was trying to, you know, act yeah. up too much. But uh, it was a sick experience, man. I loved it. You know, yeah. I think like anything, the more times you do it and practice and stuff like that, you just get better at it. But um, that was another thing too. He's been in front of a TV this whole time. Yeah, you know he's, I mean? good, for, he's good. He's good talker, eh? I remember when, so I touched down to Sydney, it was a week before we were supposed to do, we did this Fox Sports face-off thing. Yeah, I remember it. And uh, I didn't want to do it, man. 
Did I was, you? Nah, man, because I was doing getting used to like phone interviews and stuff like that. I was like, I'm acing these. Because there was like. one just before you go on, there was uh, one of the things he really hammered you for was like you missed some media day or something, and he started using that as like you soft, yeah, man. or some shit like that. He hung on to that thing for yeah, like life, for bro. fucking ages. So that's was like in that press conference, he was like, he's going surprised you showed up type thing. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. But um, no, nah, it was one of them. Like I was phone interviews and different stuff from reporters I was like oh this is mad you know mm. and then I knew it was going to be like this shit talking thing yeah and everyone's like just talk, treat it like you're with the boys now a bit of banter I was like I don't talk shit to the boys because they'll wreck me yeah, 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 <laughs> I just yeah, like yeah. kick them back yeah 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 but um that sort of got a bit twisted because I got a call from a No Limit guy saying they wanted to come to Melbourne to promote it more I think they want to come back in September to do a show. Mm -hmm. And they're like, everyone knows Gal in Queensland and New South Wales. So we'll get him down maybe because I said I went for Collingwood. We'll bring down to the Collingwood Footy Club. Dudes. I'm like, sweet, man. Fuck yeah. And then two days before or three days before, they were like, oh, change your plans, man. You're going to come up to Sydney and do it. And I was like, bro, this is the biggest fight of my life. Like I got sparring scheduled, all this stuff. Yeah. You can't be doing that to me, man. Right. And I thought in my mind, I was like, this is almost like, is this a plot? Like a tactic. A pl yeah, yeah, yeah. To sort of get me out I of I would way. think that way too. Yeah. Because it's a bit of the whole thing. It's like gamesmanship, mental warfare is going on. Yeah, this and is what I mean. With the being the B side, I was like, are they just using me up type of thing? But um, so yeah, we, I had um, training that morning scheduled and then we just, it was like an in and out job. They flew us up for the face off thing and then flew me back down but he did like a little media thing right at the at the start of the day and I that kicked that, it off yeah that kicked it <laughs> off bro because he's like this guy's but th this is the best part about this face to face kind of um one on one you guys did on Fox Sports was he was kind of trying to like just pick you apart a little bit and yeah. you're just there you were literally like a boy like one of the boys just hanging with the boys like yeah like he's he's a good fighter man like, <laughs> just, just happy to be here like literally, literally and everyone's like he's like fuck eventually he's like yeah look he seems like a good bloke yeah he's too bloody nice he says <laughs> he's too bloody nice to talk shit to yeah, you, yeah. yeah which I think actually fuck with him a little bit because I think he needed something else yeah man I you took know? that as like a little moral victory walking yeah, away 100%. from that yeah 100% and I think it caught him off guard from being more reserved and just sort of chilled and respectful, as you sort of build through the fight week, it's like, a, for me at least, I've got to sort of get myself in a mental state to compete like that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I think I've learned from one of my losses where I was just like, I'm naturally a happy-go-lucky dude, man. Like mm. I'm pretty chill, you know? And then I thought when I started a one, that one fight that I, I lost, I was just – Mentally, it was almost like I was at like a sparring match. Like, oh yeah, sweet man, you know, good good right. spar, this and that. Whereas now I realize like you got to bring a certain level of intensity to sort of fight. Okay. And I think from him seeing me just chilling and being respectful, I'll shake your hand, you know. Even like we did we did a stare down at that face off. I was like, got some baby blues, Paul. And he's just like, what do I say to this guy, man? You know what I mean? <laughs> so just chilling, man. And then obviously as I got closer to the fight, that intensity picks up and then I think he could feel it as well, like, oh, shit. Oh, uh, so you flicked a switch kind of. Yeah, and I felt like towards the end, I was almost like faking it to get there, you know, like trying to work my way through, navigate media stuff. And then by the end of it, I felt like he was almost trying to tell himself something, you know what I mean? So it's- Bro, that's just what's crazy. Yeah, but so when you flicked the switch, like what, what was it within you that you flicked? Is it just like you become more serious or the way you were communicating with him or your own sort of, you know, when you're by yourself? In I your think, yeah, I think it's more when I'm by myself. It's just my demeanor, like meditating and stuff like that. I'm trying to <laughs> visualize like some bad shit, like, you know? <laughs> Like I'm normally I'm just like I said I'm I'm chilling but for me like even the missus would be like hugging me and I'm like you need to stop hugging me right now. Oh you know? really? Like yeah, so yeah. you shut down like even personal like personal. Yeah. Bit. I think I'd be the same, bro. Bro, how's it? I got one, the worst <laughs> one, man. Not this fight, but uh, not, it was two fights ago. We were just coming out of lockdown and and uh, oh man, I was primed like missing out two years in a pandemic, not being able to compete. It was like a bad stretch. And I was like, my first fight back and I started really, this is where I really tried to really practice this sort of getting that frame of mind. Yeah. My missus wanted a dog real bad and I was like, oh, we'll get this dog or whatever. Oh no. The day of the fight, 
this the cutest little groodle <laughs> gets dropped off at my house, man. And I was like, oh, no. I was like, how good is it? I was like, get this dog away from me, man. I'm, I'm trying to be staunch. I'm trying to this little cute puppy running up to no me. No way. Man. So I gave this dog the cold shoulder for a good seven, eight hours. And then <laughs> I got back, I was like, this is the man. It's yeah, my little buddy yeah, and shit. Yeah, fuck me, bro. But yeah, man, you got to have, for me, it's that mental state of just like, that kill or be kill type mentality you know what I mean yeah so I'm really I really try and um, reiterate that type of stuff to myself when I'm going in to compete like yeah just leave it all out there and and actually try and hurt them as opposed to I've always looked at boxing for me as like people say it's not a game I try and sort of look at it like a game like yeah. just a chess match for me and my skills versus his skills I love the puzzle of trying to work someone out their strengths and weaknesses how I can work around it or beat it that's more what drew me to the sport of boxing. But now I realize it's mad to have that, but you've got to also have a little bit of element of that mm. killer. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Killer be killed type. Yeah, yeah. So but how much, like what type of, you probably can say it now, but like with when you were looking at Gal, like were you watching previous fights? What were you kind of looking to try and find that maybe you did to like input into your strategy? Um, or was it more like you just worried about yourself going into it? Yeah, a lot of it was worried about myself. Like I said, just getting... Um, just perfecting things that I know I do well. Mm. But a, a little bit of it was he's got a pretty straightforward style. Like there's not much to sort of- he's well, like my a fridge, bro. Yeah, straight <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah. There's a fridge with legs. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I looked at his attributes. He was tough. Obviously, he's got a mad engine. And I, f I thought he would be um, a lot stronger as well, just from his rugby background. Um, but I knew he just sort of comes forward. So I just had to deal with, in preparations, like sparring guys that literally their instru instruction was just- take his head off. Just come forward and try and take his head off, you know? Fucking hell. So, yeah, bro, I got chucked in. a stressful fucking camp. It was, bro. <laughs> straight up, there was three guys, man. I had three guys at one stage. There's a gym in Tarnit, good guys. But, um, yeah, there's three of them. They're like, oh, we're just going to get fresh guys coming in every two rounds just try and take your head off. I was like, sweet, man. Oh, my <laughs> God. That works bro. well. You can't give me a paycheck big enough to cop that. Literally. That's not even for the actual main event. That's yeah. fucking going into the fight. And sparring's trippy, eh? Like, yeah. That was in struggle. I literally try and take my head off after. We're like, man, thanks so much for doing that for me. Yeah, yeah. I love you, bro. Can we get yeah. a pick? Like, yeah. what? <laughs> Legit. <laughs> Box on the IG. strange game, bro. Straight Fuck, up. man. So let's talk. What, how was the actual fight? Like the Because obviously you were, you know, superior in, like, you know, they, as they say, skills pay the bills. Yeah, yeah, Which yeah. is literally what happened. But how was the actual experience, the fight against him? It was mad, bro. Like, uh, for, again, this sort of the mindset work that I was doing and the prep work that I did mentally – I've felt the calmest I've felt going into a contest and it was my biggest contest. That's amazing. That's yeah. a big win. That's more bigger win than probably the fight. Yeah, hundred percent. Because now you know for the next ones. Yeah, yeah. Like walking out, I was it was these things that you know, you don't know yourself, you played sport and you get like little doubts that creep in your mind and Always. stuff like that. Especially, you know, at a top level where you're fighting pretty good or, you know, mixing with good competition. And especially being on TV, man, like on such a big stage, in my mind, like a part of me was like, man if I get knocked out in front of you know the whole country's going to see this like this is fucked and then it was just about shifting my language and changing my mindset and I was like as soon as I made this mental switch where I was like how blessed how like grateful I am that this is something I love to do bro and I get to show the whole nation like what how good I am and it's what privilege, I can do hey? yeah it's a privilege you know some people like at times I thought like it's stressful and stuff like that. But when you strip it right back, man, to, to be an athlete and to compete at a top level, it is a privilege, you know what 100%. I mean? So when I had that come from that place of gratitude and that, like I literally, I walked out and I was just like looking at the crowd and I was like, fuck, this is mad, man. Fuck, like, it was big too, man. Yeah, it, it was, was big, big bro, I saw a, lot, a few of a few of the boys I know that we know that were there uh, obviously at the fight. They were putting up stories like, fuck, man, this looks yeah. epic. And it was hostile, man. Like we were in enemy territory, bro. Yeah, like, bro. Newcastle, like... Nice part. Like, I love Newcastle now. There's a mad. couple bogans around Some there. Some nuffies getting around <laughs> there. So, yeah. Dude, there was people re over the top. I went to say hello to my brother and my sister in the crowd, and I've always fought in Melbourne, yeah. yeah. So, like... <laughs> I'm just unassuming, you know, I'm, I'm walking, some guy's over the rail, Gun's going to knock you the fuck out, you're <laughs> fucking dead. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> it was like polar opposite. I had that and then some kid was like, can I get a photo? I'm like, come here, yeah, buddy. You're what right. the fuck? That's a head fuck in itself, man. It was a head fuck, man. But going to the fight, man, like um, it was mad, bro. Like I sort of, everything that I was sort of saying, um, again, came to fruition. Like even... Again, when we had this face-to-face -face talk, he was like, I'm going to press you on this and that. And before I was like almost not trying to face adversity where I'd be like, I'll just stay and move around where I was like admitting it. Like, man, there's going to be times, bro, you're going to be on my in my chest or, you know, trying to take my head off and I'm, I'm ready for that now. Yeah. So there was these times where 
early doors, I felt so sharp and just like picking him off. And the big game plan was like, for me, I wanted to invest in his body because I knew how fit he was. Mm. And I'm like, if I can just invest in his body and, you know, like just keep hammering him there. My coach was saying like, after five, six rounds, you don't even realize it, but it's like a fridge falls on your back. Like you, you mm. just sort of can't go through the next gears, you know, fridge on a fridge. <laughs> for right, that guy. right, right, right. Yeah, <laughs> fucking hell, literally. But uh, yeah, man, so I just hammered the fuck out of his body, you know, and then it sort of opened up the headshots as well. And uh, it was it was good, man. Like the whole thing, back and forth, he was so tough, man. My could you tell, nut, could my you tell he was just it? coming good. Really? <laughs> yeah, man. I actually that. heard you talk about it. You're like you gave him a few punches where like you could have knocked out a horse. Yeah. And like he, he just didn't like. Nah, man. Like uh, there's a couple of times he'd wince and I'm like, oh, I've got him here. And then he just sort of <laughs> bite down and keep coming. I'm like, far out, Fucking man. Fucking hell. And that was the thing too. I, I sort of knew in my mind, like a few people were like, you're going to knock him out. I I had a feeling like it was going to go the distance. I was mentally preparing. I'm like, all right, is this going to go 10 rounds for sure? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because it was that, that you know, uncertainty of like, if I didn't want to empty the tank trying to take him out and then I'm gassed, you know, because mm. he does have that endurance factor. But I was cruising, man, winning the whole fight. And then it got to around round eight. Just I lost the point in round seven. Mm. I don't think the ref was a bit dodgy too, just yeah, quietly. Yeah, no, 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 probably. There we go. There we go. We it was love a bit that. dodgy, the ref. I it think. is boxing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Proper B side I was there. <laughs> but um, yeah, bro, I lost the point in the seventh and I just tried to maintain that focus. But coming around eight, I started getting this thing in my mind where I was like, he kept drilling at me. He's like, I'll eventually get to him. I'll eventually get to him. And like, that's he, what started to come into your mind. Yeah. Then. I was like, I started to feel the fatigue. I've only. Prior to this fight, I've only gone eight rounds before. So that was right. the, the longest I've gone. So I hit that sort of mark where I've been. And then it was almost like no man's land. You know what I mean? Fuck. And I'm like, fuck, man. I hope <laughs> I hope this guy's not right what he was saying. You know what I mean? <laughs> Are you thinking this in the fight? Yeah, Even right. after the clinic you're kind of putting on, like where you kind of felt As I'm dominating, dominating, I, I could just feel like my energy slowly zapping a little bit. You know what I mean? Right. Just because he's constant pressure, obviously the moment and then, yeah, I was just like, I'm feeling this here a little bit. And then I got back in the eighth. Actually, I actually told his corner to fuck up in the eighth round. Did you? Every time I'm looking, again, this is the thing I've learned through time. Like, you got to keep a game face the whole time. Yeah. So th there's a guy just like standing there looking at me like, he's tired. He's, and I'm just trying to like, from being like this, I'm like, oh, poker face. Nah, I'm sweet as, you know, you're trying yeah, to play yeah, the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time I get up, I'm bouncing my toes. Like, I'm sweet. Uh, I've got, yeah, I've got yeah, all yeah. day. That makes a, makes a difference, doesn't it? Makes a difference, man. Yeah. But this guy was like pointing at me. He's like, he's fucked. He's tired. And, and I was just like, fuck you. Like, I'm sweet, bro. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a bit of gamesmanship going back and forth. And then in the ninth round, I was dominating the first half of the ninth. I'm like, bro, yeah. easy work. Yeah, yeah. For unknown territory, this is mad. And then the fridge fell on my back. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, man, I was gassing hard, man. I yeah. felt like just exhaustion. And it was, I think the body shots or the investments that I did, he couldn't really push. But I remember leaning on him at one point in the ninth round and he just uppercutted me and my head just like bounced like this. Oh, no. But it was not like he could feel, I couldn't feel so much. Yeah. Everyone was getting so worried. They're like, you know, it looked like I was gone. It wasn't like I was getting hurt from any shots. It was more just the fatigue, man. Yeah. And then I hit a point where I was like, I'm never giving up right now. You know what I mean? But there was about, for about a second, I thought to myself, I'm like, can this guy just put one on my fucking chin and, and just, just put me out, bro? Because so I'm really, so wrecked, That's man. amazing how the brain works, hey? Like, amazing, it's that, bro. Because if you think about, and I'm sure you would have sparred so many more times, like beyond eight rounds of time. Yeah. Like, but it's almost like because you haven't fought that length yeah purely because you win too too quickly or whatever yeah, yeah, or the yeah. fights don't go that distance it's like the body tries to trick you all the yeah exactly because right, you haven't man. experienced it in like that oh, it's like the mind it's like a it's like we've got a built-in safety switch like this is going to be <clears throat> full on and we'll try and save you 100 you know? percent. but then it was again it's as soon as you can tell that voice to shut the fuck up yeah it just gets out of your way and then it going into the ninth round for me being absolutely exhausted going into the tenth my coach was dropping the, you know, the rocky one line speeches of all speeches. But oh, you know, I love this that. is three minutes of your life. <laughs> now you gotta go. <clears throat> and then, um, yeah, man, I just found another gear. And he was just, my coach essentially said, like, just be like a bull and matador. Like, he yeah. can, if you use your legs, he cannot touch you. Right. And because I did, I reckon I banked up all the rounds prior, his only chance was for me to stand there and have a toe to toe. Yeah. 
So it's like, just get on your bike, dance around, and you've got him. How hard was that to do? Like, because in theory, that sounds easy, but 10, five, it's been 30 yeah. minutes by that time you've been fighting for. That's what I mean, man. It's like when I made that switch in my mind, I was like, I'm just going to bounce right now. Right. And then I was like, I was surprised. I looked at the like the time, and I was like, oh, a minute 30 to go. This is, And I was just like bouncing, bro. And oh, I was like, felt good. I was just feeling myself, man. And I looked <laughs> up 15 seconds. I started being like, yo, I'm right <laughs> you. You know what I mean? Oh, that's and bad. I could just see Gal's face getting redder and redder and redder. Yeah, he's he's like, fucking wanted to what, kill you. Yeah, <laughs> I just can't come back. <laughs> literally, bro, literally. So, yeah, man. And then and that was the end of the fight. And then, and then I think <clears> it, it just hit me. And then I was proper wreck yeah you know I mean? yeah because i saw there's a one of the and this is why i love well love love the way you go about the sport and even gal to an extent but you guys are just chilling on a couch next to each other at the end of the fight yeah after yeah. like literally trying to smash each other's faces in so how, how did that happen did you go into his rooms did he come into yours or yeah, like, i went into his room bro so uh, i after the fight i was literally exhausted like i emptied the tank a couple of errors that i made i didn't eat i ate i think my last meal was at like three o'clock and i had like a little pasta yeah and then i didn't eat anything for the rest until the after the fight so Ugh. i was running on fumes bro so i went out the back and i was wrecked for a bit and uh yeah just <laughs> amateur hour. i didn't uh, not even a power out i didn't bring for myself so <laughs> you brought nothing to no, the fight nothing, bro. So, <laughs> this guy so one of the boys for a fucking straight championship up. on fox sports he forgot to bring energy drinks well newcastle it's a wednesday yeah yeah they should play they joints, should joints close at four o'clock in newcastle <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's so not much no, going on there bro. <laughs> yeah so uh yeah i had a couple of damon from the gym actually he um brought me an apple juice like get some sugar in here man so i <laughs> necked an apple juice and then i thought i gotta thank this guy you know because you know in the whole build-up he was being a bit of a dick and, and the rest of it but i knew it was all gamesmanship man, yeah you know he, I mean? he knew he knew that he would like you as well yeah man tell. legit bro you could tell yeah, <laughs> yeah you one of my mates was saying that he goes go likes you bro <laughs> yeah he <laughs> likes you he just yeah. has to do this <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah so i went out the back i mean i went to his room and i actually got a couple of death stairs when i walked in i don't know what they thought i was gonna do but <laughs> <laughs> a couple of the boys were like hey i just want to say thanks man <sighs> but uh yeah rolled in man i was just like dude thank you so much for the support like you know uh, for the opportunity, sorry. Like I was really, really grateful that got the shot and I just saying how tough he was, man. I was yeah. like, I can't believe how tough you are. You're literally the toughest bloke I've ever and fought. And he's 40 as well, like, or whatever he <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah, credit is... to him, bro. Like it's nuts. Bro. I think maybe just getting all those years of NRL, just being his body's proper knocked in. I yeah. think when he stops doing like anything, <laughs> he's just like fall in a heap, yeah, man. Yeah, bro, seriously. It's, uh, it was pretty remarkable. Like even like, the guy Justice Horner that fought him before me, man, like I saw the punishment that he took. Mm. And that's that's why I knew I was like, this is going to be a, a long night, you know what yeah. I mean? So but, he's um, fucking good too, man. He's good too, bro, good you know fire. what I mean? And uh, and we both bashed the shit out of him. So mm. that's what I was actually saying. I was like, for him to take that beating and to want to jump back in against another boxer again, like it's mad respect. Like, yeah. you, could, you couldn't knock him. You can't knock him. Like he's he's definitely in there to, you know, He's yeah. the real deal, you know. He's what I mean? the real deal. What What did he say to you, like after the fight? Was he saying anything, sort of? He just said, "Well done, man." He's like, yeah. "You're too good," you know. He's like, "I thought I was going to get you at the end," but he goes, "You're just too slick," you yeah. know. And it was it was mad, you know. I mean, he just like um, he's like, you got to practice that that media stuff, bro. I was like, "You got to help me out a bit." You know I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's true though, because I think, do you reckon? I don't know, maybe because boxing to me seems a bit political in that sense of like. There's a huge part of it that is your performance gets you to where you are, but also like your mouth and how you move yeah. and stuff can actually impact, you know, getting you, getting you fights. It's it's one of them, bro. I think it's weird, like to an extent you're right, you know what I mean? But I think there's a lot of like these Eastern Europeans that are jumping on the scene. They can't even speak English. True. And people froth them, you know what I mean? So yeah. I think there, there's got to be an element of it. But at the same time, like, again, if I think if you're, if you're forcing it, especially – um, the Aussie public, man, they, yeah. they're ruthless, bro. They'll see through it and they'll just be, you know, like I was getting sprayed. I've never had, it was, I suppose it's a good thing. I've never had haters, Yeah, but I had a few haters after this, man. Was, everyone's like, you're doing it right, man. If you've got some haters. But, yeah, I think so too. Yeah. I think if you're not getting hated, then fuck, what are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> you legit, it's bro. the same with this podcast, bro. Until I started getting hate, I was like, maybe we're starting to do something right, bro. <laughs> like, cause everyone was being so nice for so long. I'm like, no one's telling me what I should be doing better. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. People just started hammering me on a couple and I'm like, fuck, all right, that's mad. I'm doing all right yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> now I feel like, yeah, cause if you're doing something, not, not everyone's going to like it, you know? Yeah, exactly, man. Exactly. Yeah. So just speaking of like Aussie public, cause I think we, um, 
like this is why we love like Federer and Nadal because they come in like prim and proper and we fucking turn on like Kyrgios, who I personally love because yeah, like, yeah, yeah. guy just says whatever the fuck he wants, which yeah. when you've been in like our shoes or your shoes particularly where you're at like the top level, you kind of understand how hard it is to be that way. Yeah, like even if it is your natural personality because you know instantly no one's going to like it. Yeah. So to be it, like you've got to be ultra confident or you just got to not give a fuck essentially. But this like segueing into Cambosis and Haney. Yeah. Because Cambosis' style in press conferences is to fucking come at you, ruthless, bro. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ruthless, bro. He'll say anything, you know. Straight up. Like he was calling Haney a rat for like- I know, bro. Which was, which was pretty bad. Like I think that's pretty like- It's bad, Forbidden man. in boxing yeah. from what I've been told by like a lot of purists. Like a lot of people turned on him, even though they love him as a fighter, were like, you, you just don't say that shit. And it wasn't even like, all he was saying was like- Lopez doesn't do this yeah. or doesn't do Messaging that. Message him told me he was out on a night. Yeah, like, cool gee, yeah, like saying that, that's man. not that bad, bro. Yeah. But, and then, yeah, it's funny because Haney said, um, and he's like, I'm a rat. He's like, bro, you trained with Pacquiao's camp when he was fighting Jeff Horn. Yeah. It's like, it's, yeah, that's against your own countrymen as well. <laughs> that's like, a which, mic drop right yeah, there. That's <laughs> a, and I was like, fuck, yeah, he's got him there. But what what did you, what do you make of like Cambosis in that, in through that period? Because obviously he didn't make weight. He was pretty fiery. He lost the fight in the end, but. Yeah, bro. I don't know. There's a couple of strange ones there because the, the whole, his whole sort of career, he has been a consummate professional, you know what I mean? And I suppose he's, he's always talked it up. Um, yeah, that's sort of he's been his style the whole way through, man. But I don't know whether he thought just because it was here where he, he thought he had to do a little bit extra, yeah. it, you know, miss some weight, and that was a massive tell for me where I was like, shit, bro. Man. Yeah, can you can you explain from the boxing perspective for people? Because some I don't think I fully understand maybe how big of a win that was for Haney, but like for for naturally everyone else when he comes back, he's like, I just took a piss and I made weight. Everyone's yeah, like, oh, yeah, it yeah. doesn't really matter. But for you in your eyes, what does that actually mean when you see that? For me, it's a bit hard for me as well, man, because being a heavyweight, I've never really had to make weight. Yeah, it's different. But right? being around the circles, like a lot of the times, it's a, it's a, it's the fight before the fight. You know mm. what I mean? These guys to sort of get that advantage or to make that certain limit, you know, there's there's a lot that goes into it. You know, depending on how far away you are from that fighting weight. Mm. But you know, and a lot of guys that I know, it's like there's two things you've got to worry about. Obviously, um, your opponent, but then the diet, all this stuff to bring your weight down a smart way so you don't suffer by the time the fight comes around. Right. So when you jump on those scales, you know whether you've done the work or not, you know what I mean? Or you know whether you've got there and how good you've done. And then you see Haney jump on, man, absolutely Fucking shredded. Just disgusting, bro. Like, bro. Yeah. It's like... It's like a pimp or something. that shit, cheese bro. on that, you know what I mean? Yeah, legit. He, was, he, he looked like a beast, you know? And then when he came out and then he, he saw that, and he would have taken such a confidence boost from it. Just for yeah. the, And, like, he did come back and make it, but undisputed title, man. Bro, you know, in his home country. In his home was, country. I saw that, footage so. of Haney. Like, I think Damian Lillard, the NBA player, came over because yeah, yeah. they're both from Oakland. Yeah. And he came into his thing and he was just like shaking his hands. I can't believe he didn't make weight. Because this was yeah. in that two hour period. Where, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, hey, and he's like, man, in his own country. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, they, they're taking something from that. They're taking know? heaps from it, bro. And then even though he, he made it and whatnot, again, <laughs> I just feel like sometimes, and this is the the flip side of talking mad shit. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got to have those big shoulders to now, from all the shit that he talked, to, he'll be copping it so hard, man. You mm. know what I mean? So it's it's on him to sort of bounce back and ultimately, you know, it doesn't mean anything. You know, he's the one. That's what he said. I think you heard him say it after the fight. I'm the man in the arena. You know, yeah, I'm the yeah. man who's getting in there. So, yeah, true. you know, good on him, bro. He, he's razzing up the sport and he's talking it up. But when you do talk that much shit that's and then you get beat how you get beat. Yeah, bro. In fairness to him, like, because I absolutely love him. Because I think what people don't really realize is like, fuck, his last 10 fights prior to this, he's fought all on enemy territory yeah, and stuff. Bro. like, And been this he's way. He's a road warrior. Yeah, he's a road warrior. Yeah. So like he's done it hard. So this is his first fight back home for ages on the biggest stage. But he also strikes me as a guy that won't, this won't like overly fuck him. Like in the sense of like, if people turn on him, he won't. He won't let it affect him. Nah, nah, nah. He, I don't he just got so. beaten by maybe a better boxer. That's yeah. simple, That's literally what it was in my eyes. And I think as well, man. Like he's got that. It is almost like that Conor McGregor confidence where you see yeah. him to a point like, dude, he's lost four of his last five, and he still thinks he's the shit. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah, so, yeah. I think for Cambosis, I love him too, man. I reckon he's yeah. a G. You know, so his mindset. I think that's his strongest tool. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's just about now. It's for me. It's going to be hard to see how he structures a game plan to beat that because 
Haney just stuck behind the basics, bro. His jab was lightning, Yeah, bro. can you explain the game plan of Haney? Because for a lot of people, they say it's a boring fight. For people like you, you'll be like, it was genius. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? One million percent, man. Like, I think um, the way he... There's a lot of sort of rules that I sort of... My coach has written down, like, say, four pillars, yeah? Mm. And the first one is a managed distance. Right. So he managed that with his with his lead hand, with his jab and his feet. Yeah. So Cambosis just trying to get in the whole time just kept him at that range, you know what I mean? Managed distance, strike strategically. Like he he knew, bro. When he went to one side, he'd take out Cambosis' right hand. When he moved to the other, it was like his boxing IQ was next lev, yeah. you know? Controlling the chaos. You see when Cambosis goes in for those flurries, he just stepped in and smothered. Mm. And then surviving efficiently, he just knew how to wear the clock out. Like That's he did bad. all these things, bro. And it's like these are subtle nuances that, like you said, if you weren't sort of looking for it, you wouldn't pick up on it. Correct. But um, I hate when people say that, like, oh, it's boring, it's boring. Well, he's doing what he's doing. It's on Cambosis now to make a fight of it, you know? Mm. He could, he should have been trying to feign a bit more and sit on his chest. Yeah. So it's it takes two to tango. People say, like, even in the last round of my fight with Gallant, you know what I mean? Like, oh, you ran the whole time, you ran the whole time. It's like, man, I'm up on points by a mile. Yeah, it's his job to hit. You, his, he's got to get to me. My, the, you can only it, lose in that round, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly, bro. So I think that's, that's boxing <coughs> smart, you know yeah. what I mean? And especially a, a fight of that magnitude, bro. Like, like I said, just his feet and his jab. He won the fight with his jab mm. at, a, at such a world level. And I think... Um, Which is crazy, right? Crazy. When, you, when you think about the scale of that fight, it's because yeah. he's he's the youngest undistu- undisputed uh, world champion since well, Mike think Tyson. Think about that too, man. Like since Mike Tyson, the level of maturity at twenty three years old to to go in a you know forty thousand packed arena, crazy, bro, <laughs> dude, man, the crazy. Because I think he's that's maybe his twenty seventh or his twenty eighth fight. So he's had yeah. like seven or eight more fights than Cambosis. Who's Literally. obviously a lot older because he's fought fucking heaps. He's been, Dude. I think he went pro at like 16 or 17. Yeah. He? I think he was fighting like, yeah, Mexico. Yeah. Like, just to get his first couple fucking of fights. Fucking crazy. Because he, the why I've actually watched Devin Haney a lot because I was like, fuck, I saw one of his fights and I was like, bro, this guy's undefeated. Yeah. He walked out with the Gucci. Yeah, and then yeah, I just yeah, started yeah. like looking at him like, who is this guy? And then I learned so much about him, bro. He was at the Mayweather boxing gym from like 10 years old training there. And I think this comes back to the point of what you're saying where he fought smart was like a big thing out of their mantra is like, just don't take punishment. Yeah, hit, like, not get yeah, hit. Yeah, don't, don't take punishment. It's like the number one rule. Well, my coach says that to me all the time. He's yeah. like, any man that gets in the ring is tough. Mm. And he all, like, you know, that's that's a prerequisite for boxing. Yeah. Man. you got to have a bit of toughness about yeah. it, you know. But he always says like, don't show me how tough you are, show me how smart you are. You know ah, what I mean? Because t- he goes, tough guys get hurt real bad yeah. in, in fighting. Like, And it, and there's life after boxing, bro. Like. It's, you know, your sporting athletic career is a blink in your life. And especially, you it, it might be good. We were just talking about, you know, I fought three and a half weeks ago and people, it's already like on to the next. You think about your career and you've had, you're this tough as dude that had scraps <coughs> and went to war with everyone. You're going to be forgotten about so quick and then you're going to have to deal with the repercussions of, you know, mad head trauma yeah. and CT. Like all these things are real things, man. So. Yeah. Defense, you know, keep those hands up, brother. Like, t- t- <laughs> tough is cool, you know. That should be like the last resort. Yeah, you know? that's what I said to Gallon as well. I was like, "Your," he kept just saying like my toughness and this and that. I was like, "Bro, yeah, that should be like using that at like the back end of the fight where you know you're tired and all the rest. It's like heart and toughness. Yeah. What about like your skill, your mindset, your IQ? Like, yeah." You got to get through all those things of me first before I hit toughness. You know what mm. I mean? That's a good point, bro. Yeah, man. That's so, a fucking good point. It uh, it's all well and good when you. I'm even the same on the outside. I was like, get in there, get him. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But uh, I got to respect people that it actually takes toughness and discipline to stick to a game plan because sometimes you do just want to bite down and be like, oh, fucking smash him back. You know what <laughs> I mean? So yeah, yeah it, it takes being a bit more mentally tough to stick stick with the game plan and and that's what I mean. Credit to him, bro. He didn't. You heard the crowd booing him. He didn't Bro, this, flinch, there was man. one moment where the crowd got up and Cambosis was like throwing his hands up and then started sm- throwing and then the bell went. Yeah. And yeah. he just stuck his tongue out at Cambosis. Yeah, I was man. like, bro, this guy's a real champ. Bro. Literally. Like that shit. Because when, like, when you play in front of big crowds or fight in front of big crowds, when you start to hear the commotion, I think in boxing it's probably worse than other sports because 
if you shift focus for one second, you can get fucking smacked. In Literally. other sports, you can shift but come back because the play might be there or here or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But with yeah, with that, I was like, fuck it. I was watching Haney because I look for that shit. And he just like was staying so focused. And I was like, own. fuck, I respect that because that's where you would have been like, fuck, this cunt's going to come now. Yeah, I've got to get on my guard. But he just stuck there and glued to the floor, jabbing. He was a G, man, the yeah. whole time. He was gun, bro. So what's... um. One of the, actually, what got you into boxing? We should actually talk about where you started because. Yeah, man. Um, I don't know. It was a few things, I think. I think um, I grew up in Craigieburn, man. So it was, it was <laughs> pretty, streets. pretty rough area, bro, <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, they had a youth center open up just up the road from my house. Right. And I stumbled in and I just wanted to suss it out. And I think, it, like I said, it was a mix of everything, man. I think a, a part of, like a little bit of me wanted just a little bit more confidence to defend myself. Mm. Um I was jamming Rocky movies, man. I love the real good Rocky story, bro. So, yeah, it was just one of them. I used to love wrestling. Like right. WWE. WWE yeah, me too, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, a part of me was always like jumping in the ring. I don't know. It was like something appealed to me about it. It was real, obviously, getting punched in the face. Yeah, no shit, bro. But, um, yeah, man. So, it was just a bit of that. And then even my family, but I think I had a bit of a chip on my shoulder. I've, I think... <laughs> I don't know, I've got a, like a bit of a soft face. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so these people wanted to pick on me and shit all the time. And my uncles were like, I was like, I might get into fighting. And they're like, nah, man, you're too soft. Like oh. someone, you're going to come up against someone that's got nothing. They want to take your head off. I was like, I'm, I'm competitive as, what do you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like, nah, you, you know, you're too, you know, happy going and all the rest of it. So I that's what actually scares me about you the most. Like, yeah, you're you're like the nicest guy ever, bro. And then yeah. like, what is it that flicks a switch where he's like, I'll just fight Paul Gallant. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, bro? Are you getting that energy into your brain as well? I'm like, when's this guy going to flick the switch and just fucking Have a rip this place <laughs> apart? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nah, man. It was, so yeah, it was a bit of, um, just like, I'll show you guys a little bit as well, you know, to my uncles and stuff like that. And, um, and then even my first one, I was, I didn't even, I was like, I'm going to know whether I wanted to do it, to be honest. Really? Like yeah, your my first, first fight? Like first amateur, amateur fight. Amateur yeah, yeah. Fight. So I always wanted to learn a, the skill of boxing or, you know, some form of martial art. And then I just became a bit of a natural when I started. Like, fuck, man, you're actually pretty good. You know, you should have a fight straight away. Southpaw too, like straight away. Man, uh, people love seeing that shit. Yeah, bro. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, man, I had my first fight. And then I think it was what I was talking to you about, that feeling of like, you shit in yourself and then you feel the fear and sort of do it anyway. Yeah. I sort of got addicted to that a little bit, you know what Fuck. I mean? Fuck. And then, yeah, just trying to continually hone that. Right. Know? There's okay. always another obstacle, another challenge, you know. And I like the the discipline factor of it as well, you know. Me too, bro. Yeah. It keep, keeps me in check, you yeah. know, because I, like, <laughs> I feel like if you're a little bit too much downtime, you know, you just get a bit more rowdy with yeah. the boys yeah. and running around. So... I like having something lined up. But again, it keeps my mind disciplined, my head and everything like that, my body. So, Bro, that's why I think sport's so important, man. But actually, just were you, were you like to get into boxing young? You mentioned like, were you, were you a troubled kid growing up or was it more like you just wanted to challenge challenge yourself? Yeah, I just wanted to challenge myself, bro. I played um, local footy, like AFL growing up and then it was, just, it was just another thing that I sort of thought, yeah, this is a mad challenge. I was never troubled. I was... To be honest, I was a fucking bit of a pussy. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? yeah, man. So I just, again, like shy, just kick back. I didn't like trouble or anything like that. I still, I hate confrontation, bro. So it's, again, That's it's crazy, bro. It's strange that I'm in this game, you know what I mean? Yeah, it is. But um, is that what keeps you in it though? It's like the fear factor of if you don't do it, you're, you you know there's something that you're leaving behind. Like, you know, yeah. you know you're, you're, you're missing a part of your full potential of, of something. Is that what it is? That's what it is, bro. I think for me now, the, my goal is just like, I want to do, I just want to try and reach my full potential, whatever that is. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm excited to sort of keep pushing the barriers and, and try and reach my full athletic potential. If I can do that, bro, like, I don't know if that's, if I'm just the best in Australia or, you know, best in the world, yeah. wherever that's going to take me, I want to pursue that until the wheels fall off. And then who knows what's next? Bro, <laughs> do you know what? So this, this, I don't know, this is a catch 22 because I had that mindset too. And I think people who have that mindset are the ones that go the furthest. Yeah. But when you stop, like, it's like, fuck, what now? Yeah. Because you, you're, you're going to channel that elsewhere. 
That's and I know you're doing like training. It's just like it's a scary part. This is why I, why I do this, man, because I was like, I was fucked for years, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was fucked for years with that. Do you need a co-host? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. Maybe we can do a hot box fucking. Straight up, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we actually should. I might have yeah, a few years, bro, when I retire. <laughs> yeah, we'll do, we'll do one. On, man, I love combat sports, bro. I watch it more than I watch soccer. Do you Crazy. really? Yeah, because I think it's for me, it's like I fear that. I fear that industry. Like, I, I, yeah, yeah. the people in that, they, they fascinate me that that's what they want to do. I, I think it, it does take a certain special mindset to sort of jump into that where you willingly know you're going to take punishment. Yeah. Obviously, you're going to do your best not to. Correct. But yeah, that was all I was doing it for really, man. Just like yeah. to love, love the sport, love like the technical aspects of it and then finding out about yourself. Whereas now... For the first time, it's like a bit of a financial incentive as well, man. Yeah, well, now you're in a position, not power, but like you can actually start to make your your own moves rather than be the guy that, hey, DMing people, I want to fight yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. People are going to start man. fucking hitting you up. I want a shot at the title, bro. Yeah, you bro. Know, <laughs> you got to come correct, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, hey, brother, that's it. That's nah, man, but yeah, for me now, I'm like, again, I've seen a few doors open up, like with this new bridge away, they're talking about potential fights overseas as well. You know, a massive domestic fight with Justice Horny. These are big things where I'm like, if I can live like a monk for the next two, three years and just, you know, apply myself, I can set myself up. Man. Yeah, so it's exciting, man. It, it's motivating as well. It's it's pretty surreal because I spoke to um, I actually do want to talk to you about like mental fortitude because I've heard you speak about it and I think our listeners will appreciate your views on it in your own experiences. But I spoke to um, Michael Zarafa recently, and it's funny because yeah. like, obviously the Australian boxing like it's been put on the map like recently more so because obviously people got title fights, world championships, yeah. even now like subscriptions for like Paul Gallen's fights are through the roof versus, Literally, bro. you know, maybe like a few years ago we were watching Mundine, Solomon, Jeff Horn, all these people. Yeah, yeah. And now it's like we're watching fucking, you know, ex AFL and rugby league players getting similar numbers. But I was speaking as Rafa, I was like, even for yourself, you guys are in your early thirties, you've worked your whole life and it just all of a sudden just comes at once. Yeah. Like almost 10 years of grit and pain, fighting at the pavilion, fighting different people, fighting maybe for less money. And then all of a sudden it just comes at once. And it's like, okay, now you've got to capitalize. Yeah, yeah. Overnight like, success, yeah, 15 like, years in the Yeah, making. do you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. To, to people it's like, who's this guy? But it's like, you've been fucking throwing punches since you were 16. Been grinding hard. Yeah. yeah. I actually got Mike into um, boxing. He, Did you he really? came with me to that youth center? No way! Yeah, yeah straight up. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy because he's a northern. Uh, he's a northern. Yeah, northern he was best mates. Oh, he's best mates with my brother. No way! Yeah, man. So I was like, I'm going across to this youth center. He's like, What is? What is that? I'm like, Come around, check it out. No. And then, yeah, it kicked off from there, bro. Fuck that youth center, must get. They must be fucking yeah. have some statues out <laughs> the front, bro. bro. <laughs> we need to get it going. <laughs> yeah, that's unreal, bro. Hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. You're right, man. It was. It's a. It's a grind and a half, bro. Like in that sense. But like I said, I. We've all, him and I have sort of had different, um, we had like a shift in our careers. I wanted to pursue Olympics. That was my thing where I was wanting right. to stay in the amateurs a little bit longer. And, and, uh, that was a goal of mine where he sort of, as soon as he turned 18, he's like, stuff this, I'm going pro. Yeah. You know, and he was just grinding from there, man. Just knocking people out. Yeah, man. Really he was going man. hard from Fucking there. crazy. So, and he, you know, again, man, again, I've got a bit more of a happy go lucky setup where he's just been like, I want to be a world champion. I want to be a world champion. And mm -hmm. I think... Um, it comes with pros and cons. Like for him, he had to sort of, he has given up a lot and sacrificed a lot, mm -hmm. even like excluded mates and, and shit like that. Very single-minded and driven mm. for that one goal. Whereas I've been able to sort of, as much as I'm super competitive, driven and, and stuff like that, I can sort of separate myself from boxing. Balance I think like, what, yeah, man, like what you were saying about um, what am I going to do after this? I think I'll know when it's time. I don't think, no disrespect to someone like Sam Solomon, but like he should not be fighting anymore, man. You know what bro, I mean? Like, I'm going to say, I'm going to say this like now. I had him on my podcast. Yeah. I yeah. swear to God, bro. I had him on my podcast the week before, uh, not his last fight. It was the first time he fought this Jesse White guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're talking about. Yeah. Bro, I saw him five days later. He didn't recognize me. That's what I'm saying, man. Uh, I'm know? not saying that to take the piss. Like I was like, f I was like, holy fuck. But we literally had an hour conversation, and then he looked at me, and I had to like reintroduce myself. Yeah, it's full. And on, I don't bro. know if his head was on the fight or whatever. It was before the fight, yeah, but I was yeah. like, no, I don't think it was, man. <laughs> bro, I genuinely. And then in the in the obviously discussion, and like he's one of the most incredible 
athletes and the way he trains and dedicates his life to it at that age. I'm That's just, insane. It's insane. Like, I admire it. But then when he was, like, on the podcast, slurring words and stuff, I was yeah. like. That's what I was uh, talking about, bro. That's that trade-off, fuck, you know. man. So for me, like, I feel like as much as I love this sport, I think I'll always have something to do with it. You know what I mean? Like, I want to give back and I feel like I've got a good mind for the sport where I can help teach people and stuff like that. But – if, if I was, I think one thing I learned from the pandemic as well, bro, because I thought even that was a lot of uncertainty. That was in like the, arguably like a peak period of your career too, Literally, right? yeah, like, yeah. yeah. This is my th- prime. 29, 30 when that yeah, happened. Yeah, right? so I was like, um, when that was all going down, I almost felt like I had to make peace with the fact like, all right, man, if this is it, like, fuck. And I was sort of thinking about like the things that, what am I grateful for that I've got out of the sport, you know? And I was like, the, the lessons that it's taught me, the people that I've met, like I feel like, I'm winning. I've taken more, and it's rare. I've taken more from boxing already than it's taken from me. That's a good. That's a good fucking perspective to have. Yeah, bro. So for me now, <clears throat> I've got in my mind like all that's left for me to do is collect some accolades. Yep. You know what I mean? Like the lessons and and the people and all that, that sort of stuff, the experiences. Yeah, I feel like I'm soaking it up, but. Just get a couple more straps. Yeah. You know what I mean? Get a couple more big paydays, baby. more money baby. bags, baby. Yeah, yeah. Out, right? Let's go. <laughs> Fucking oath. <laughs> Can we actually, so one thing, and it kind of ties to what you said before around like this unfulfilled potential you think you're leaving. Because I've heard you speak about like mental fortitude, which I fucking love listening to people talk about it, particularly fighters. Yeah, yeah. So your, a view for you is like when you go into the unknown, you go in with perspective, like who who is Chris? Like who who am I going to be through that that period of this fight or yeah, taking yeah. on this guy? What what for you like the mental strength kind of aspect do you kind of look at and what do you gain out of those situations? I guess. Um, th- that was a massive thing, and that was the thing. Say for instance, in my last fight, man, that I was super proud of of myself. Like there was the, I had I had an out there, you know, in the ninth round, I could have literally been like, man, like you know, I've, yeah, I've given it everything I've got, and you know. I had, you know, there's things that you can say could have given a million excuses there, you know what I mean? And the fact that I, it's it's such a tipping point and it can be, it's like you can teeter on the edge of that. And I feel like I've heard so many people, elite athletes, where they, it's not about like um, not saying you're going to quit and just blocking it out of your mind completely. It's almost like you're, it's right there. Like you, mm. you're going to do one or the other, you know? And it's the people that make that, decision in that second that are like, no, nah, I'm going to keep pushing through. And it's like, that's where the greatness has come from. You know what I mean? So even in my training, in my buildups to my training, cause I feel like not trying to sound up myself or anything, but naturally I'm very skillful in the sport. You know, I've got, I had some things that I'm pretty God gifted in the sense of like, I don't know. I can just see punches coming good. You know, like really, so, boxing's never really. A lot of it's come super, super natural to me. Yeah, I saw that in your early fights because I think like people are like he's a bit of unknown, and then you yeah. just like wallop some guy, and they're literally sleeping. Yeah, and you're yeah. Like, fucking hell. It's one. It's, it's one of them, bro. So for me, I think I've I've heard people talk about this like with basketballers because they're freaks, like athletically, and that things come so easy to them. Yeah, that they lack in mental fortitude because it's like when when something gets tougher they face adversity that right. they're not used to because it's things <clears throat> come so easy yeah it's almost like a panic might set in or you got like your outliers obviously like yeah and kobe's your jordans that are just work freaks you know yeah but um that was a thing for me and this was about like mental fortitude like sort of galvanizing my mind a little bit when i'd go into practice whether it be a strength conditioning session or anything like that it was almost like it was structured about going to that dark place. You know what really? I mean? Yeah, man. So when I lost my last fight, it was the only fight I've lost yeah, as a I professional. Yeah, I was going to say, you're 12-1-1. One, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the only fight I lost as a professional was where I think mentally I went into the fight thinking like, oh, yeah, I'll just dust this dude, man. You know what I mean? And then okay. facing that little bit of adversity, um, it was almost like a shock to me. Yeah. And then I'm like, whoa, man, what the fuck is going on here? You know, yeah. and then and then panic sets in and then all these other things set in. So, you know, I, there was a, I had another, like a few other issues as well, but like for me, what I tried to take away mentally when I'm like, all right, well, how can I go in and fix? We, that's what we started doing. So we'd be going into like these brutal strength and conditioning sessions. Fuck. And it would just be like, at the start, it was just about like pushing through. Obviously it wasn't like, it almost make the workouts impossible to do. <laughs> But just like, I don't care if you don't finish it, but you're just going to keep pushing until you, you know, 
the pass out. Yeah, it's not about hitting the targets. It's about keep going. Right. You know, so then, rocky shit, bro. Just right. Come I used to get anxiety here. going to train, and I'm like, <laughs> fuck, this is gonna be fuck, the worst, bro. And then you start, and I'm like, I right, put the music on, let's J it up. I'm ready to go. He goes, no music today. Oh, I mean, no, so just and then run and, with the mind. Yeah, but and then you got these things that it does. It's like your mind plays these tricks, man. Like straight away before I went to jump on this treadmill, I was like. It's way harder without music. Like you put that in your mind already. And then mm. it's like constantly telling that little voice in your head, shut the fuck up, man. You can do it. You know, yeah. keep pushing. And I just kept beating myself mentally. And that's where I felt like I'm building this mental strength. Cause it's like every time I'm like, I'm not going to make it. And then you'll be like three, two, one. And in that split second, I'm like, you just fucking go. And then yeah. you just push your mind to that next spot. And it was like a constant level ups all the time, you know? So I feel like that through challenging yourself that way, man. That's when, when you do jump in, it's like my coach says, what they call how we call home. <laughs> you know? Oh, this guy. Yeah, man. man. So just like trying to stay in those deep waters all the time. It's like, who can tread water the longest? I'm like, I've been treading here for ages now, oh bro. I'm chilling God. here. You know, so like I said, man, it's it comes with, it's like any type of muscle, the mind, you know what I mean? You can't just be like, do one set of bicep curls and be like, I'm jacked for life. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, you yeah. got to stay on it the whole time. But yeah. That process, going through that process is definitely helping me, I think. What they call hell, we call home. I love yeah, that, bro. Right. Can we speak about um, your coach? Because I've I've had some like insights and some people let me know that like he's not just like a coach. He's kind of like a bit of like a male role model or he yeah, gives bro. you so much more than just like, you know, the the ropes in the ring. He gives you a lot more outside of that as well. 100%, man. He's a, he's a G. What's his name? Ray Giles. Ray Giles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ray Giles, man. He's a, the guru of boxing, bro. <laughs> is he? Yeah, oh, he's, man. He's a bit older, right? Yeah, he's 79. 79, wow. 79, man. And uh, he's just a, he's a special cat. Like, yeah. I don't, I've never met anyone like him, to be honest. So, and it was a funny thing how we met. It's some of, one of those things where people just say, maybe it's meant to be. You know what I mean? Mm. I was working at a gym and uh, he would do, he, he still does jujitsu to this day. Get fucked. Yeah, bro. He's a brown belt. He's hanging, he's just working hard to get so his black belt. So he could tap the shit out of me like in five seconds. Yeah, oh, man. Seven, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. And seven, you're done. Hey, Ray. <laughs> just lock, lock you up, bro. Put you to sleep. Yeah, shit. But uh, yeah, man, I used to go, he, he trained at a gym where I was working at and he'd do like a trade-off with a guy. He'd train him an hour of boxing. The guy would train him an hour of jujitsu. Wow. And I'll just walk past, and I'm seeing this old dude rolling around the floor. I'm thinking, what's going on here, bro? You know what I mean? And then I'm watching him doing these moves, hold these pads. And I just sort of, every now and then I'd walk in with my lunch and I'd just be watching. And then I'd be watching his moves. I'm like, fuck, I haven't seen that move before. And I reckon the jiu-jitsu guy hated me, man. Because after a while, I'd be just put my hand up. I'm like, can I ask you a question? Oh, no way. <laughs> Where, what's that move? Or why are you doing this? Oh, so you, you doing started that? to become inquisitive to this guy. And like, yeah, yeah, fuck? yeah. I just sort of introduced myself. And then I was like, you boys mind if I watch? They're like, nah, you can sit here and watch. So I was like, sweet. <laughs> and then, yeah, man, I just kept asking him more and more questions. I was still an amateur at this stage. How old were you at this point? I was, I think, 24. Okay. So this yeah. is quite a while ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 10 years ago, yeah. So, um... Yeah, man, I'm just asking these questions and shit like that. And then one day I was fighting for a state title in the amateurs and I was just asking him a question. I was fighting another Southpaw. And he was like, um, if you want, mate, just come down to my gym. I'd be too pleased to help you. And I was like, oh, sweet, man. And I went down and he had a couple of pro guys there and I sparred him and I did really, really well. And I think he sort of, his eyes lit up a little bit. And then, yeah, man, just just some of the phrases. He, said, he showed me like two moves and I won the – Stay tired in these two moves that he showed me. Like really, yeah. I was like, this guy's the man. See, that's bro. how powerful a coach can be, right? Because like, yeah, something basic and simple can win your fight like that. Dude, like he's the type of dude. Like obviously he's he knows the game inside out. But again, leaning into that mental side. I had a coach. Uh, uh, so I fought for a national championship in the um, ammos, and I was freaking out, bro. I was nervous. I was fighting a silver medalist. And I was like, man, this is fucked, bro. And this guy goes to me, he's like, just put your hand on your pulse and count to six. Take it. So I did that. And I'm like, I'm still freaking out, bro. Like that. <laughs> I don't know what book he read that out of and said, use that as advice. Well, another coach said that to you. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was my coach at the time. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> that's supposed to help me right now, man. But I'm still shitting myself. What the yeah, fuck? Fuck, that doesn't work, bro. Yeah, bro. And then I went, um, my first pro fight with Ray. Again, I'm talking about like contrast. You just knowing your fighter and, you know, knowing what to sort of say at the time. Oh, you're in these tiny, these 10 ounce gloves that are just like, I'm strapped on and I'm thinking, again, it's my first professional fight. He literally just put his hands on my shoulders and he's like, son, 
you're the best heavyweight in this country. I know it. Now go show everyone else out there. <sighs> and I was just like, where's the app, bro? Where's the <laughs> app? You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, man, it's just – um We've got a really, very special relationship, him and I, and he's just, um, like I said, I've said it before, like he doesn't just show me things or hasn't just taught me things how to sort of conduct myself as a fighter, but mm. just life lessons as a man in general. I haven't really had the best sort of or many male role models, you know what I mean? My old man passed away when I was like 12, so. Yeah, I heard about that, man. That's crazy. Yeah, bro. So like. So has he kind of like been been sort of like, a, I guess, a bit of a, a father figure yeah, in the sense of that? Yeah, dude, dude, definitely, man. Like sort of, you know, we met at, when I was a full adult anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think, you know, I've, I've just sort of been, maybe that's why I'm a softie as well, but I just got raised by my, my old lady, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I'm a mama's boy too. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, but still, you still fight Paul Gallon, so <laughs> <laughs> I still stick with a mama's boy. At least he could say, well, I fucking bad people for a living. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. But yeah, bro, so um, he's definitely taught me some hectic lessons. Um, what would be, like, if if there's anything, like, specific, specific that, will stay with you forever that he's taught you what, what would that be do you reckon it just sort of it's different principles you know what I mean like certain things that he sort of it's almost like he's got a little code that he sort of lives by you know what I mean and it's just like throw away one liners that are just gems that Fuck, he you know yeah he'll be talking about some you know just about standing up for yourself or if something's not quite right he this dude's there's zero gray area as well man like <laughs> there's loads of gray area in my life I'll let this guy off I won't do that yeah for him it's like he, what he does knows. he tell me? Like, There's no right way to do something wrong or something like that. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, just, you know, he always tell me like, you know, you got to stand for something. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Yeah, yeah. So certain things where if you feel like it's right that, you know, and you, you should definitely stand up for that. And even just being loyal to people and honor and stuff like that. This, he talks a lot about, you know, just like honoring. He's never once signed a contract with a fighter. You know, he, he did a lot of, um, he was a strength and conditioning coach for a lot of AFL clubs. Never so, like oh, his word, really. yeah, he, that was his word and that's what it was, you know what I mean? You that's didn't have mad. to ever second guess anything like that. So, certain things like that, man, how you carry yourself and shit, like, it just rubs off on you, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I think one of the things, uh, I actually saw him speak about you and one of the things, so obviously he's a bit of an older guy, he was like, the only reason he felt the need to get back into this world was because of you, because of like yeah, something yeah. special. He saw like you were very different. Yeah. So for him, it was like, fuck, he was kind of not anticipating being, I guess, a professional boxing coach to the level that maybe he was with you, but he was like, I've got to coach this kid, which yeah, is pretty man. crazy. But it was one of those things, I think, um, boxing's a freaking savage game, man. It can, it can zap you. Like, there's a lot of like heartbreak and not many people do crack it, you know what I mean? So I think for him, he's seen the highest of highs. He actually coached Jeff Fennick at one point in time. He coached uh, Lionel Rose, who was another world champion of ours. So he's he's been to the top of that mountain and then obviously plateaued and maybe he was thinking to get out of it. But then, yeah, something that he saw in me sort of sparked his interest as well, man, which is a G up to me as well. Like when I hear him sort of, you know, sort of pump my tires and say things to me, it's like I want to just – Give it my all, man, just for him as well, man. So yeah. give back exactly like what he's putting into me and shit as well. Yeah, fuck, so. bro. This is surreal, man. These next few weeks are going to be big. So what, Hooney's fighting on the 15th? Yeah, yeah, Hooney's fighting on the 15th, bro. So It could be him, could be an overseas fight. You're still... I yeah, think, yeah. yeah. I think we'll, I'll be watching that one for Keen Eye, man. Yeah. Hopefully um, he gets up because I think... It, like you said, bro, Aussie boxing's on a mad roll at the minute, man. It's crazy, so, bro. I'm loving the domestic scene and... Um, the more and more we can build it, I think the better it's going to be, you know, going into the future, bro. So I think him and I, man, would be a hectic fight. Like just he's such a sick boxer and um, there's like you could sort of spin it like a couple of cool ways, man. Like he was the first – he made history being the first um, Aussie to turn pro and fight for an Australian title and win an Australian title. Wow. And I just made history being the first guy in 100 years to hold Australasian Australian – simultaneously so wow. we both beat Paul Gallon you know whooped him it's meant to be you know what I mean? yeah bro it's a good it's a mad build up you know Southport Orthodox so yeah I reckon uh, that'd be a sick build up if we could get that going but also overseas bro it'd be again I'm just I feel like riding this wave I'm, I fought internationally as um as an amateur but never as a pro so okay 
got to be another box to tick off as well, man. Definitely, bro. Well, man, you've got big fans in this podcast. The listeners, I'm sure, are going to love you after this, bro. We Much fight, love. The gallon fight was, bro, the, the way you carried yourself throughout and after and just put on a clinic, we respect. So, mate, good luck for what's coming in the future. And Much bro, love, Jay. Thanks, thanks for coming on the podcast, You're a G, bro. bro. Thank oh, you. Man. Thanks for having us, man. Oh, man. All good. Bro, <laughs> clock the podcast, <laughs> 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 Done, baby.